We've been talking here about a new series that we just started, Life Management Skills. And, um, you know, that's really what Christianity is, isn't it? It's life management skills. And we talked about last week how that what God is going to do in our life is not going to happen by accident. And we talked about the energy and the effort and the uh, efficiency and how effective we can be, you know, with our Christianity. And we have to, uh, you know, be subjective. We have to look at things objectively, but we also have to be subjective. We have to say, okay, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? You know, what is it that's, is there patterns in my life before sin grabs a hold of me? Is there before depression gets a hold of me, before fear gets a hold of me? And there's a lot that we could have built off of um, last week, but we were pretty much uh, focused down on the thought of we are making decisions constantly in our life. And we need God's divine intervention on those decisions because we're constantly taking steps forward. That's what life is all about. Um, it's about making decisions that lead to other decisions. And you can make decisions today that will mess up tomorrow's as well. Not that God doesn't have grace and mercy, but for instance, I mean, you let's just think about the worst extreme here. You go out and you do yourself something that can harm yourself physically. You don't go back from that and say, oh, well, I can just put my arm back on. Or, oh, I can just take care of that um, physical issue. There's children here tonight, so I just want to be careful how I say this, but there's ways that you can mess your life up that you can't go back, okay? And I think you understand now what I was saying there. But um, you know, we need to be very careful about the decisions we make. And we talked about prayer and we talked about good counsel and how God helps us to make those right steps. And we don't need to see every decision seven months from today that God wants us to make. We need to know what it is God wants us to do today in our life. And, and we talked about how sometimes we get back in life and we say, man, Lord, you really knew what was down the road. You know, I can remember Pastor Metter out there in Iowa and I'd say, I can remember talking to my wife for hours sometimes on different things. This is decisions that were made. And, you know, as a young person, you might not know this, but you don't know everything. But at 23, I thought I knew everything. And I remember laying in bed at night and thinking, man, I just this is the, this is really what we should be doing, you know, because I'm a leader. So um, and that's I'm a I'm a leader. So that's a struggle for me, because if you're a leader person, you can get in the way of leading other people. By the way, if you're in, under authority in somebody, God's put you in a place to work, you always want to be one step ahead of them. Oh, they're getting ready to hammer a nail in. I'm ready to hammer. I'm ready to hand them a hammer. But you never want to be two steps ahead of your boss because that's you directing them. Okay? God does not make us to be directors in the sense that we're to guide and be part of because we're accomplished or we're put into a position of leadership. OK, and um, so and then there's the other, which is interesting because I was going to talk about these two types of people tonight, and that is the pleasing type people, which will do anything anyone tells them to do. And they'll basically not make any decisions themselves at all. They'll just be followers. And that could be really bad, too. So we we basically, uh, you know, I know I'm talking about a lot of philosophical things on Wednesday nights here, but there's we need to understand we are a psychological people. So what we think about is what we are about. The Bible says a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And if you think about it, in your place in this world, you are one of two types of people. You are a controller or a pleaser. And somewhere on that spectrum, you are in your life. And you need to be very careful if you're a leader that you don't lead other people's lives and set a standard for their life, which is what I want to talk to you tonight about. I want to talk about standards. Because our life is not about just self-government, but it's also setting a standard that others will follow. And that's what we want to look at here tonight, the standard. We find this word in the Word of God, and we have what we call flags today. We have banners. The Bible doesn't use those words. It uses the word standard. And so when you look at this word in your Bible and we begin to read it tonight, We'll find out it's in the context of who these people were. What were their standard? What was it that people saw when they saw the tribe of Judah? Well, they saw a standard, and that standard had a symbol on it, and it stood for something. It stood for that family, and that's what I want to talk about tonight because we have to develop standards in our life as Christians if we're going to have life management skills where we say, you know what, I feel like doing this, but this is wrong. This is against my standards. Amen. 
And, and also contrary to that, or I should say comparing with that, forgive me, uh, comparing with that is a standard that's set for us by someone else instead of by God. We don't want to do that either. That's the other extreme. We can have standards in our life and we could say, well, I wonder what so-and-so is going to think if I do this. This isn't what they would do. Well, that's okay if they're good godly people, but if they're controlled people and they're trying to manipulate your life and tell you how to walk with God to the point where you don't know the Holy Spirit's voice, all you can do is hear their voice. You don't want to follow their standard. And you know, you can deal with all of that in Christianity. Very, very important. So Numbers chapter 2, let's begin here. I'm preaching a little bit before I get the context of what we're going to look at. So Numbers chapter 2, the Bible says here in these 12 tribes that they were all going to have a standard. The Bible says, verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And then it goes on to say, on verse 3, On the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nation, the son of Amminadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. How many of you guys think tonight that every word of God is in there for a reason, even the Old Testament for us as New Testament believers? I do. I do. So what do we see here? Uh, what do we know of the lion of the tribe of Judah, our Savior? He was born of this tribe of Judah. Amen. We know he's going to uh, split the eastern sky, the Bible says. Amen. The Bible says he's going to come in through that eastern gate. That's why it's closed in Jerusalem. And as we read this, I want you to pay close attention to verse number two, that it's going to be the ensign of their father's house. Our standard is to be Christianity. It's a pretty simple message tonight. Our standard is to be His standard. What our emblem of display to this world is to be is not, well, what does my brother or sister think, but what does He think and what does the world, and what is the world supposed to be seeing in my life? What is the standard that God has for me? And so you clearly see here, every standard was according to the house. Now in this context, we know there were 12 different tribes. So every tribe had a different different little standard that's, or a uh, flag that would be flown. On each flag would be a different little emblem of some sort, some type of a symbol for that family. And uh, that would be what they were part of. And you know, we have a standard to live up to, don't we, in Christianity. And I'm afraid that Christians have so long preached standards in a way that we've lost the emphasis of what standards is all about. You'll see churches and they'll just, they'll harp on so many things so much that they forget what the, what is Christianity all about. It's about bringing glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ who is of our Father's house. Amen. That's what the, that's what the Christian life is about. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, if you'll go there very quickly, I believe it's Ephesians, so bear with me if it's not. Some of this I'm shooting from the hip tonight, but I have a few things written down. Ephesians, it's not there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There it is. Ephesians 3.21. Ephesians 3.21. All right. What does it say? Unto Him be glory. Who? Who, who is the Him? God the Father. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. So what do we have? We have a standard to live up to. Do you all agree today that we are of that tribe of Judah as children of God? That's our standard tonight. Now, I find something else very interesting here as you go back to Numbers chapter 2. I've never preached on this before, so I'm pretty excited about this. Numbers chapter 2. So you see the correlation, right? We're all on the same page. There's a standard there. There's a family that's to be represented. We are of the family of God. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, been made part of that brotherhood in the Lord, if you would. The Bible says He's not ashamed to call us brethren. There's a lot of verses there that support that preaching. But Numbers 2, we find something else here. The Bible says that down in 
Verse number 9, All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred, which is to say 186,400, for those of us um, in our generation. And it says throughout their armies, and now look at verse number 9, the last statement, if you would. These shall first set forth. Judah was to be the example. They were the ones that were to pitch first and to set up their standard of righteousness. And they were also the ones that when they would leave the camp, they would leave the camp first. They were the first ones that were to follow. And the Levites were in the midst of that as you study your scriptures out. So what do we find in this? What's the application? Number one, the world's standards are not to lead us. We do not go to the world and say, what do you think is right in this area of life? No, we go to the Lord and God's Word and say, what is the standards that's written in this book? And this is what we want to attain to. And uh, the problem is when we come to the point in Christianity where we think the world is to influence us, the world is, we're to be like the world, we're to adapt to the world's ways so that we can win the world. We've done it completely opposite of how God intended Christianity to be in this world. So let's look at uh, some more of that here. Just a few thoughts. First thing we see here, these people were leading by example. Amen? They were leading by example. And if you think about it, and you know, we don't have these traditions in America, right? But in other countries like England, they had these family crowns and these uh, emblems, if you would, these family, am I using the right word, crown? Is that what it's called? Crest, thank you. So you all knew I needed help there. The crest, and that crest stood for something. You know, you don't, uh, you're, you're representing a family. You know, you, you don't, there's a symbol there. They didn't just choose anything and threw it up on there. There were symbols that meant something that that family had lived, died, and breathed for and what they would stand for. And, and uh, you know, it was a thing to dishonor the family, and it was another thing to honor the family. We need to understand that. You know, when those people came into that camp, they needed to remember as their blessing came from God to that tribe specifically that God wanted to use them in a special way. As you read in the Bible, not everyone had the same blessing. They had a standard to follow, and so do we here tonight. They were to lead by example as Judah was. So are we tonight. And you know, something that's interesting as we find, and I don't think it's a coincidence, in Numbers chapter 2 we find these words. I, I think it's so significant because... We do have a standard to live up to as a church, but we also have a standard to live up to as individuals. So we find this to be often called liberty in the church. We have liberty. Um, I talked to a lady today about homeschooling, and she was asking me questions, and I said, you know, you have liberty to do what God leads you to do as a family with your children. Because you might have a different standard or make a different decision right now in your life than where I am as a pastor doesn't mean that you're making the wrong choice or your standard is wrong. And that's the problem with Christianity. We get this thing figured out where like wherever I am, that's where everybody else has to be. The Bible talks about being single-minded in the church. Amen. Right? We need to have unity in the church. But we have liberty in the church to do what God tells us to do as individuals and and Apostle Paul talks about this in the New Testament, how that, you know, they were to be not pleasers of men, but to be pleasers of God. And this is very important because whenever somebody gets in the church and gets on the side and starts teaching somebody their rules, their regulations, and their rituals, before you know it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to affect their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because He is our standard. He sets the goals for our life. And... Um, and again, I understand there's authority and, you know, there's different issues. But, um, and that's why I talked about control freaks and pleasers, if you would, because this gets involved in this situation a little bit. You get leaders and, you know, they'll want to start to control other people in the church because they're in leaders. And then you'll have the other people who are pleasers and they'll just, they'll do whatever everybody tells them to do. And before you know it, they're not following God's standard. They're not following the Spirit of God. They're following a man instead of living up to this family name as God would have them to live up to. And so I, I, I just, I don't really hold anything back. You guys know that sometimes. I'm, I say maybe too much, but I'd, I'd rather talk about something, not because it's an issue, but to keep it from being an issue in the church. Does that make sense to you tonight? All right? And, uh, and I've seen it, so I can preach on it. Uh, I, I've seen it as an example. So 
These things that we saw, these standards, in verse number 2, let me say this. It says, every man. Every man? But wait a minute. Did they all have a standard? No. They had one probably single standard for each camp, but the Bible says every man. So it could be that maybe each one had their own little standard as well in their very thing. I think this is important. We have some general Christian principles that we all apply to our life, but when it comes to individual liberty, God gives us that. And we need to understand that, amen? For instance, your skirt has to be exactly to the middle of your knee or lower. That's not in the Bible. And yet some people make that everyone's standard. Uh, the Bible says modest apparel. So if you're wondering, be more modest than what you think might not be modest. It's really that simple. Okay? When somebody looks at you, do they say, you look like a Christian? You have God's standards in your life? Or do they say, man, they look just like the other person that's taking pictures of themselves. They look just like the other person that's walking around in this world that we don't even know is a Christian or not. Someone ought to look at us and say, there's a standard set there. Amen. You all with me tonight? So, and I'm just, I'm saying that, you know, as, as much as I can as a pastor, because here's the thing about standards. You might have a standard in your life, and I used to say this statement years ago. We can have standards that will change, but convictions will never change. Well, I found out that's not true because you can be convicted over something because your heart is tender to God. But if you harden your heart to God, you won't get convicted anymore. I'm just telling you. I know ladies that say, you know why I don't wear pants? Because I feel like every man is looking at me in those tight pants. And that's why I don't wear pants anymore. And it used to bother me. 20 years later, this lady's now wearing pants again. So it was an issue that she knew that men were looking at her. They were attracted to her form, and she felt that God did not want her to dishonor herself or the Lord, so she wore a dress. But you know what? She's no longer convicted about that. And now it doesn't matter to her. And then you have a lady that wears pants, and she wears a nice long sweater over those pants. And you know what? That's a lot more modest than some of the skirts I've seen. But yet you'll have preachers that will say, the only thing you can ever wear is a skirt. Anything else is ungodly. I'm just telling you here tonight, we have got to live by God's standards when it comes to holiness. And again, I believe in liberty. And I believe that there is unity where there's liberty as well. But we need to allow God to work in people's lives and allow the Spirit of God to convict them. And you know, we can encourage them in the Lord. Amen? Well, somehow I got the medal in the night. I didn't plan on preaching all that. But this standard is seen, amen? It wasn't something hidden. Our standards will be clearly seen by the world. When the world looks at us, they should say, that's a Christian. Whether it's in our language, whether it's in our dress, whether it's in our conduct, in our activities, they should know there's a different standard in our life than what the world has, amen? You know what we're preaching tonight? We're preaching holiness. We're preaching separation. We're preaching sanctification. Those things in our life that God tells us to be. It was also set, amen? It wasn't something that was constantly changing. It was set. And, and I, when I say that, you know, in other words, it wasn't going to be, uh, you know, uh, how do I say this? We are constantly adapting. We are constantly being conformed to the image of, of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't wear shorts. I don't feel that I should. I just don't do that. I'm telling you the truth. I don't want to wear shorts. I feel that I need to look like a Christian. If you want to wear shorts, that's between you and the Lord. I don't live in Florida. Maybe if I lived in Florida, I wouldn't have the same standards. But that's the standards I have here in Pennsylvania. That's what God's led me to do. I might be 60 years old one day, and you might see me, and I might have a pair of shorts on. You'll say, Pastor, you went backslidden on God. I have no idea. If God gives me liberty to wear shorts at 60 years old, I'm going to do it. But I just set that standard years ago in my life, and to this day I've kept it. And I'm not preaching me right now. What I'm preaching to you is God has a standard for us to live by in holiness in our life, and we need to listen to Him when He tells us what to do in our life. You can't look at the world's models and find out how to dress as a lady. Oh, dear God, no. And likewise for men. Tight shirts, all big and buff. Yeah, you look good, man. But you know you look like every other worldly man walking around. Hello? Am I right? 
Now, some of us think I'm much show. I know that. But you see the principle here. All right? We see the principle. So standards. Um, you know, here's a great thing. That's, this standard would be clearly seen, but it would also be secure. Get this, please, for a moment. When the winds of the world would come and blow upon this standard, it's not going to blow down. That's how you know if you are being sensitive to God's leadership in your life and you're not doing it because you want to please man, you're doing something in your life because you know this is what God wants you to do. When men disagree with how you're living your life or your neighbors or your family or your friends says, why are you like that? What are you doing there? How come you can't be like... When that standard gets challenged, if it remains, then you know it's a godly standard in your life. And I said this years ago, God will never get you when we stand before God in heaven. He'll never say, you know what? You were too holy. He'll never say that. And I heard a pastor say years ago, you know, the problem is the world used to have standards. And guys, I mean, we watch black and white movies. The ladies got dresses on. The men, you know, are decent dressed. You go back, you'll find out the world's standard used to be better than how we are as Christians today. They were modest. They wouldn't dare show skin. Now we just show as much as we can. You know why? Because the world shows it all. And so as the world went in that direction, the Christian was one step behind them. And slowly we've defied our, defiled our conscience to the point where it doesn't bother us anymore as Christians. But here's the wonderful thing, and I know I haven't preached too much Bible to you tonight. Here's the wonderful thing about this is Isaiah 59, 19. We're going to pull this together with some verses because I've preached to you what's on my heart. Isaiah 59, 19. I haven't even looked at the clock one time. Praise the Lord. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like the flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. This is the context here of the Lord's return. It's talking about you know Him coming back to reign here on earth, but God's going to have a standard. He's going to have a flag, a victory. You know, a lot of people say the Christian flag. I have often, and some of you might not believe I'm going to say this, I have often thought about putting a flagpole out front with the American flag and the Christian flag above it. That The world would turn upside down because I'm an American. I love America. But I believe Jesus Christ is Lord of all and is sovereign over America. But if I did that in the front here, I mean, we, it would blow up. You, you'd have people, terroristic threats, and you're a country hater, and nothing gets flown above the American flag. But in heaven, God is greater than all of anything we'll ever see down here, any kingdom, amen? Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But there's going to be a standard. It's going to be flown from Jerusalem one day, man, a, a, a sign here. And so we're warned in the Bible to not adopt and adapt to the world's standards. Jeremiah chapter 10. Our standards are to be different. Jeremiah chapter 10. And if you want to learn the way of the heathen, heathen, all you have to do is just turn on the TV and listen to the radio as much as possible and just look at all your friends. And you know When they start combing their hair a certain way, you do it. And they start wearing their pants a certain way. Well, they got tears now. Wait a minute, now it goes halfway down the leg. Now you do that. You just follow their, just, just whatever they're doing, you're doing. Guys, let's face it, the world's got a strong magnetic pull. It, I mean, it, just like we have this big ball of earth that has gravity on it, the world and its, its ways has a great pull on the, on the Christian. You're going to have to know, learn you know, how to have your attraction in the right direction so that you're polar opposite when the world's standards go against God's standards. Um, it, it really does have to do with your heart. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, please. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Their standard is not to be ours. Amen? Their standard is not to be ours. In fact, for us, uh, 2 Corinthians 6 tells us this. 2 Corinthians 6. And then I'm going to close with Thessalonians because it's a really, really, really good book. I was reading it here this morning. Um, where it's Second Corinthians 6, I believe. Let's go there. Second Corinthians 6. Saying here, we're not just to not learn their ways, but you know, God says a lot about avoiding sinners. Can't avoid running into them, but man, you can sure avoid running with them. Wanting to be like them and, you know, talk like them, um, act like them. 
And it says here in verse 14, Be ye not, this is 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What it's saying is, they're not us, friends. All right? 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Um, and what agreement hath the temple of God? Who is that? Or I should say, what is that? It's the church, and it's the church. <laughs> Amen? You with me? Say, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, we are the temple of God. God is living in us. We're to glorify Him with our body and members, which are not our own. And He says, for ye... Oh, there it is. <laughs> I love when I do that. I can't tell you how many times I've preached and been like, and the Bible says, and it's like the very next phrase, 2 Corinthians 6, 16, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. There's that standard. Is the Lord's standard seen in our life right now? Whatsoever you do, do so for the glory of the Lord, that He might get glory in the church by Christ Jesus. It's His standard. And I, guys, if you read Isaiah, the Bible says we can weary Him in our iniquities. We can, as the Bible says, you have made me to walk in your iniquities and wearied me in your sin. The Spirit of God dwells in us. We are in the tribe of Judah with that standard today as the children of God. Are we living up to that standard? Are we adopting to those that family which we've been made a part of? And then it says, Wherefore, verse 17, Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So here, of course, sanctification, separation, righteousness, godliness, and the, the, the lack of worldliness on our part. The Bible tells us that's what the grace of God is going to teach us, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, amen, and to live soberly and righteously in this present world. That's what our standard is. Lastly here, let's go over to 1 Thessalonians. I want you to read something here. Really, really good. And I think here's a perfect example of somebody who lived up to God's standard. And interesting enough, Paul says, you know, you followed me. So Paul was living up to the standard of God. He was, he was trying to do all he can to live for the Lord. And, and he wasn't ashamed to say, be followers of me. Again, he wasn't a control freak, but he certainly knew what it meant to walk close with the Lord. And he taught others that. In fact, the Bible says, I'll prove that to you, because in this scripture, he said, I nurtured you as nurse as a as a well let's read it as a, a woman would cherish her children so it says watch in first thessalonians chapter one and again let's go to verse three because remember the context of that ensign that symbol that would be put on that that standard for the tribe of judah okay was to be what of their father's household remember that verse three he's talking about prayer here remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, knowing what you've been made part of. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost, in much assurance, as you have known what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Can I say this very quickly because I missed it? We have two standards that we absolutely can follow and need to live up to. That is the standard of God's Word, but we also until I believe that um, as sometimes young Christians or as growing Christians, we should be able to look at somebody or someone and see something to where someone is stronger in their areas of Christianity and say, I want to, that's a great, that's good, that's good. I need to apply that to my life. You know, what you just said was a blessing to me. I, I want to take hold of what you just shared with me from God's word. Watch what Paul says. And ye, verse 6, became followers of us. Okay, that's bad if you got a control freak, but it's not bad if you got a guy who's in control by the Lord or a lady who's in control by the Lord because she's going to help you become what you need to be as a godly woman. Are you all with me here? Followers of me or us as what? And of the Lord. See that amendment? See that little thing he put in there with the Scripture? Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now here, check this standard out. So that you were examples 
ensigns. I mean, the world saw them and said, man, that's, that's Christianity. And he says, to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia, they were the ones that were set forth first. They saw their calling, their high calling of God. For ye, from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. Watch this. So that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. What a standard. What a Christian walk they had in their life to the point where they said, we know what family we're part of. We're going to let it fly. We're not going to be ashamed of it. It's set and it's going to be secure and the whole world's going to see it. And we're not ashamed of it, amen? And uh, that standard again, what were they following? They were finding, following this book and other believers who had turned to the Lord before them. And do remember what standard is set in our home and in our lives is a standard that somebody else is going to follow as well. We need to be very careful about that as we're making decisions in our life. Paul said, look, if I got a standard in my life that becomes a stumbling block to somebody else, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cast that stumbling block before my brother. Amen? So, And there's a lot of application to that. You know, Some people say, I'm not drinking, and I've never drank, and I don't drink anymore, and that's good. I don't either. And then somebody else goes the next step and says, I'll never drink in a restaurant that serves alcohol. Well, if that's their standard, God bless them. I had that same standard. We moved to Iowa, and all of a sudden, every single restaurant, every grocery store, every gas station served alcohol. What am I going to do? It was at every single place. I, I couldn't find anywhere to buy my gas. I couldn't find anywhere to eat. Nothing. So my standard changed. I came back here to America. My wife and I, we went out the other night. We got pizza. America. I've been in America a while. Thank you, Mary, for your laugh. I love you. We came back here to Pennsylvania. I'm so glad you laughed right there. <laughs> came back here to Pennsylvania. Now there's restaurants with alcohol, restaurants without alcohol. Jesus sung, sat among the wine bibbers, Brother Dan. Did you know that? He sat among them and ate with them. So, But if a person has that conviction, it says, I'm not eating anywhere that serves alcohol. God bless you if that's what the Lord's telling you to do. The other night we went and had pizza. And we pulled up to this restaurant, and I said, nope, I don't like it. It's too much like a bar setting. I'm not going there. But I've had restaurants. I've sat in restaurants with Liberty and drank a Coke, and there was somebody on the other side drinking a beer. It didn't bother me in the least bit. You, do you see what I'm saying about Liberty tonight and standards? And, I, and you, some of you are like, Pastor, you, what in the world? You're telling us too much. No, I'm telling you, we need to worry about what God thinks in our life, and we need to walk in the Spirit of God, and He's going to help us to set a standard that's godly. Amen? And if your standard changes a little bit, let God change it and be sensitive to His leadership. Amen? And so when I went to Iowa, it's, it's more than wet. I mean, it's saturated. It's everywhere. You know, so what are you going to do? My standard changed. So I'm backslidden on God. Amen? Y'all pray for your pastor. Amen? So life management skills, standards. What is the standard we need to live by, man, and what God has for us? And you know, there was probably some people in those in that assembly in Judah. They weren't living up to that standard, amen. And we sometimes, we need to get a look at that banner of righteousness and uh, remember who we are. We're children of the living God. We need to have that example like these people did, the Thessalonians, that the whole world said, man, these people are God's people. And uh, so let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for this message. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the blessed book. And, of course, the blessed hope, Lord, we know you're coming again. And uh, I think the Bible talks about there, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? And another scripture says, will we be ashamed at your coming? That we not be ashamed at your coming. Lord, we certainly need to realize tonight that we serve a true and living God, a holy God, a righteous God. Help us, Lord, never to look at this world and say, well, what do you think is right and wrong? How should I live my life? But Lord, help us. To walk in the Spirit, learn from You, and uh, live for You, Lord, more importantly. And yes, uh, Lord, I believe if we all had that desire, we would have unity in this area of standards. And uh, because we don't want to honor You with our lives, with our, with our voice, Lord, with everything we do, for the glory of the Lord. Bless our prayer time here tonight, Lord. And again, for those that couldn't make it, we certainly pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen.